let's talk about how you actually work with significant figures. So I'll just work through an example of a couple of cases. So you've got 11 times 1.23. Your final answer here is going to be 1.353. And what we have to do is we have to figure out how many sig figures are going to be in our final answer. So again, what we're going to do is we're going to count. We've got two here. We've got three here, which tells us that our final answer has to have two significant figures. So if we look at this number as written, we have one, two, three, four significant figures, and we need to cut this down to just two. So we're gonna start from the first significant number, we've got one, two. So anything beyond this three is too much precision. Since five is our last decimal point, or our last number after our significant figure, we're gonna round up, and this will give us a final answer of 14. And this finishes us with two significant figures. So again, when you do the calculation, do the whole thing out. Now, convert to the correct number of significant figures, and generally this is gonna require you to round the last number. Let's say you have 17.1 plus 2.19. This is gonna give you 19.29. In this case, it doesn't matter how many significant figures you have, it matters what the least precise decimal point is. So in this case, you're precise to the tens. In this case, we're precise to the hundreds. And so this is gonna be our limiting scenario. So now, we need to truncate our answer here. We have a nine here on the right that's greater than or equal to five, so this gives us a final answer of 19.3, which happens to be three sig figs. Now, understand the number of sig figs you end up with from addition and subtraction may be completely different than the sig figs you have in each of your numbers. So we'll see that when we look at this case here. So in this case, we have 1.19 minus 1.10. If we simplify that algebraic step, we get 0 0.09, which would give us an answer of 0 0.99. Here's kind of where it gets a little fuzzy as to how to do significant figures. So let's say you want to look at the sig figs for each arithmetic step. So here we have two decimal points and two decimal points, EPs. When we take the difference, we end up with 0 0.09. Well, this number here, 1.19, has three sig figs, and this has three sig figs. Now, when we take the difference, we end up with one sig fig. So when we multiply the 11 times the 0 0.09, this would tell us that we're limited to one sig fig, so our final answer should be one point, or it should just be one. You shouldn't have anything but one. However, if we distribute the 11, we'd have 11 times 1.19 minus 11 times 1.10, which will give us 13.09 minus 12.10, and this will give us an answer of 1.01. So the question is, who's right? In this case, if we did all the math and worked it out, we should end up with two sig figs here two sig figs here, which will leave us with a final answer containing two sig fig figs, which will be 1.0. However, if we did truncate this, and we looked at the final answer, we should end up with an answer of 1.0, so who's correct? I know it's kind of a long way of getting there, but what I'm trying to get at here is that when you start doing algebraic operations, it gets a little fuzzy as to how to figure out how many sig figs you actually have. I prefer to carry all the decimal points, so don't bother truncating significant figures. Carry out the whole calculation first, get your answer. Then I would say, based on the sig figs of each of your individual answers, let that set what your answer is. Now, this is assuming that you're all doing this in one mathematical step. If you're breaking it into individual steps, then the significant figures rule, rules apply for each individual step. But in a case like this, you've got two times a number with three times a number plus three, I'd say stick two significant figures and just kind of use the multiplication rule and let the multiplication rule dominate.